critical of Vice President, Vice President Biden's policies um, on race, specifically on the issue of busing in the 1970s, having benefited from busing uh, when you were uh, a young child. Vice President Biden says that your current position on busing, you're opposed to federally mandated busing, that that position is the same as his position. Is he right? That is simply false. And let's be very clear about this. When Vice President Biden was in the United States Senate working with segregationists to oppose busing, which was the vehicle by which we would integrate America's public schools, had I been in the United States Senate at that time, I would have been completely on the other side of the aisle. And let's be clear about this. Had those segregationists their way, I would not be a member of the United States Senate, Cory Booker would not be a member of the United States Senate, and Barack Obama would not have been in a position to nominate him to the title he now holds. And so on that issue, we could not be more apart, which is that the vice president has still failed to acknowledge that it was wrong to take the position that he took at that time. Now, I would like to also talk about this conversation about Eric Garner, because I too met with his mother. And one of the things that we've got to be clear about is that this president of the United States, Donald Trump, while he has been in office, has quietly been allowing the United States Department of Justice to shut down consent decrees, to stop pattern and practice investigations. On that case, we also know that the Thank Civil you, Rights Division, this is important, the Civil Rights Division of the United States Department of Justice said charges should have been filed, but this United States Department of Justice usurped, and I believe it is because that president did not want those charges to go forward, and they overrode a decision by the Civil Rights Division of the United Thank States you, Department Senator. of Justice. Under my administration, the Civil Thank Rights you, Division will reign, and there will Vice be president independent Biden, investigations. Vice President Biden, I want to like, give you a chance to respond to what Senator Harris just said. When Senator Harris was the Attorney General for eight years, in the state of California. There were two of the most segregated school districts in the country, in Los Angeles and in San Francisco. And she did not, I, I didn't see a single solitary time she brought a case against them to desegregate them. Secondly, she also was in a situation where she had a police department when she was there that in fact was abusing people's rights. And the fact was that she, in fact, was told by her own people that her own staff, that she should do something about and disclose to defense attorneys like me that you, in fact, have been, I mean, the police officer did something that did not give you information would exculpate your, your, your uh, client. She didn't do that. She never did it. And so what happened? Along came a federal judge and said, enough, enough. And he freed Thank a you. thousand of these people. If you doubt me, Google a thousand prisoners freed. Kamala Harris. Thank you, uh, Vice President Biden. And Senator Harris, your response? That is, this is simply not true. And as Attorney General of California, where I ran the second largest Department of Justice in the United States, second only to the United States Department of Justice, I am proud of the work we did, work that has received national recognition for what has been the important work of reforming a criminal justice system and cleaning up the consequences of the bills that you passed when you were in the United States Senate for decades. It was the work of creating the fir one of the first in the nation initiatives around re-entering former offenders and getting them jobs and counseling. You, I did the work as attorney general of putting body you, cameras Senator. on special I agents bring in, in the state of California, Ga I, I and I'm wanna, proud of that work. I want to bring in Congresswoman Gabbard. Congresswoman Gabbard, you took issue with Senator Harris confronting Vice President Biden at the last debate. You called it a, quote, false accusation that Joe Biden is a racist. What's your response? I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris, your response. As the elected attorney general of California, I did the work of 
significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work of being in the position to use the power that I had to reform a system that is badly in need of reform. That is why we created initiatives that were about re-entering former offenders and getting them counseling. It Thank is you. why, and because I know that criminal justice Thank system you, is Senator. so broken, that I am an advocate for what Thank we you, need Senator. to do to not your, your only decriminalize, but legalize marijuana in the United States. I want to, I want to bring uh, Congresswoman uh, Gabbard back in. Your response? The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you are in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not, and worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that, and the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. Senator Harris. My entire career, I have been opposed, personally opposed to the death penalty, and that has never changed. And I dare anybody who is in a position to make that decision, to face the people I have faced, to say, I will not seek the death penalty. That is my background. That is my work. I am proud of it. I think you can judge people by when they are under fire, and it's not about some fancy opinion on a stage, but when they're in the position to actually make a decision, what do they do? When I was in the position, of having to decide whether or not to seek a death penalty on cases I prosecuted, I made a very difficult decision that was not popular to not seek the death penalty. History shows that, and I am proud of those decisions. Senator Harris, thank you very much. Senator Bennett, a question for you. Why are you the best candidate to heal the racial divide that exists in this country today, which has been stoked by the president's racist rhetoric? Yeah, first of all, the president's racist rhetoric should be enough grounds for everybody in this country to vote him out of office. That one thing alone should be enough. Second, Don, I, I, I want to answer your question by tagging on the conversation we were just having. This is the fourth debate that we have had and the second time that we have been debating what people did 50 years ago with busing when our schools are as segregated today as they were 50 years ago. We need a conversation about what's happening now. And when there's a group of kids in this country that don't get preschool through no fault of their own, and another group does, equal is not equal. And we've got a group of K-12 schools that are good because families can spend a million bucks, and you've got the Detroit public schools that are as segregated as they were, equal is not equal. And let me tell you something else, Doug. I believe you can draw a straight line from slavery through Jim Crow, through the banking and the redlining to the mass incarceration that we were talking about on this stage a few minutes ago. But you know what other line I can draw? 88% of the people in our prisons dropped out of high school. Let's fix our school system and maybe we can Senator. fix the prison pipeline that we have. Thank you.